Hoi there, it is Skyward Shield. Welcome to Football Talks. We are done with the regular season, so no scrub teams like Tennessee, Dallas, New Orleans. None of those teams are going to be talked about or even thought about that much anymore once we get to Saturday because we are in the postseason. Wild card rounds are this week. I am joined by Bill. Say hello, Bill. Oh my god. Hello. It's been a, it's been a journey to get here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Skype is being an issue, so I think next week we're going to try Discord to see if that works. If not, we will come back to Skype because we have no other choice. But anyway, we are going to talk about the last games of the regular season, and we're going to talk about. Yeah. We decided to go with the other team because Dallas is not worth talking about this year. Hopefully, they'll draft something good. I say they're in the same situation as Detroit draft a corner because. I'm not to talk about the game in detail, just to give one little nod. My God, there was a point where they were leaving players wide open. I think Washington's last touchdown was a 70-yard touchdown or something. With I, I don't know who it was. Completely alone. Yeah. Their corner. They need help with cornerbacks right now, just like Detroit could use a cornerback. Other than that, I think they're fine. I don't think they need to worry about a running back. Maybe get depth with it. Cause what's his name? Right. Dunbar is kind of going to come back, maybe draft like a mid-round running back and develop him to add depth, and yeah, we'll see where you go. But we're going to talk about the other team, Detroit. Detroit went out nicely, I think. Could have been a bit, bit of a better game, but I think Detroit played for, for Caldwell. I'm not sure. Whether he goes or not, to me, doesn't matter. As long as they keep the coordinators, I think they're fine. But with the coaching change, that's very likely going to happen, so... I'm I don't know. We can't really speculate on his fate bill, but the Lions did really good. Stafford, I think he made some type of history. He set some type of uh, NFL history record. I don't even know. And but... Megatron got another touchdown. It, the Stafford share just throws the ball everywhere. It honestly reminds me of like the Cowboys when they're when they when they play good because Romo sp uh, spreads the ball everywhere, even if that might make Dez a little unhappy. But the 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 Lions did great, but in the second half they let the Bears hang. But it was fine; they still had control. They didn't give up the lead once, so they didn't even get close to blowing it. I would say it was all under the Lions' control. But Bill, it, how did you feel about that? How did you feel about this final game? Overall, it sort of epitomized the, what the Lions' season really was—a tale of two halves. Either the Lions would play like garbage in the first half and come back and play well in the second half or the Lions would play in the first uh, play well in the first half and play like garbage in the second half it was a, it was the more of the same they never had a game where they played a whole game minus probably the Philadelphia game and even in the Philadelphia game they didn't they didn't step on Philadelphia's throat in the fourth quarter well they were letting but, go because it was very well done yeah, it was way out of reach. But anyway, I'm just going to say it just epitomized the season because it was the exact same what they've been doing the entire season, letting teams come back when they shouldn't be coming back, which the Lions' defense was playing really well throughout the entire game until the end of the game where they let Jay Cutler and the Bears come back and score a few touchdowns to make the game interesting. It was a big... The Lions were up decently big well, on at the... Least the uh, at least the offense didn't take the... the uh, they didn't put up the gas. They kept going. They didn't stop. Yeah. Which that... The well, offense, really, that was all that mattered. Because even if the offense or Chicago could score a touchdown every time, as long as Detroit's offense kept putting up points too, it was like a... It was like... The, the the gap never really closed that much, if that makes sense. And, and here's the other thing. I, I don't want to hear any more garbage about uh, Matt Stafford not being a good quarterback. Just look at what he's done. You know, He's the he's, NFC Andy Dalton, when you think about he, it. He is going to be a great quarterback. You just got to give him time. You got to give him the right coordinator, which they didn't have in Joe Lombardi which thankfully we fired. But if you would have had Jim, Gop, uh, Jim Bob Cooter and you had him the entire year, look at what that offense would have done. 
they they had a better offensive line the entire year. What's their final record, Bill? I can't even remember it. Uh, the Lions? Yes. Seven and nine. And if, just think of it this way. They were a Hail Mary away from winning another game, so that's 8-8. Eight eight. They were a fumble that shouldn't have been a fumble at the goal line. They would have that's been 9-7. Nine nine and and seven. Seven. It still and wouldn't have made the playoffs, but... But would have the been a, San Diego oh. game, the San Diego game at the very beginning of the year where they gave up a 28-7 to lead and lost. Yeah. That's 10-6 and six right there. Those are three games that they could have won and put them into the playoffs. It might, yeah, because it would have had an edge over Seattle, and Seattle, even though they beat Arizona, they wouldn't have yep. made it, especially since they lost to St. Louis. Yep. But... Seattle's a team I can't tell because I'm. Everyone's like, "Oh, so watch out for Seattle," which, yeah, I'm not gonna question their defense anymore. It's right. more so their offense because for they just sometimes they come to play, sometimes they don't. But that's beside the point. I I like where Detroit how they ended it. I thought it was gonna be a lot more of a closer game, right. but I mean it did. It came out that way at the at the end, but towards the beginning, I thought it was gonna be a back and forth. But I'm right. I'm okay with the result. I I know I agree with you, Bill. They could have done better, but as long as they keep Cooter, that I'll be okay with that. But honestly, I think I have to say they have to keep Caldwell as well. But that is it, the I, that is up to the new GM. The the new GM is going to decide that, says Martha Ford. Uh, obviously, they're in the process of getting their new GM. Uh, the latest news out of Detroit is that. The new GM will be selected by next week. So they're choosing is... between the Patriots one and a couple others. So yep. that'll be it. That'll be interesting. But just I I don't know. We all we we all don't know. So I'm not going to speculate on that. When it when it happens and if the um, if there is a coaching change, we'll probably we'll talk about it here since this is Detroit. But um, anyway, Bill, have you anything else to say? Actually, last thing you now now, how do you feel about Calvin Johnson staying? Because he ended his his final few, uh, three weeks were good, I think he did I, he did I, he looked like he salvaged his season a bit. Personally, I feel like all that is just hype for the rest of the nation to think that they're going to get Calvin Johnson. He's not going anywhere. He's not going anywhere. I don't care what his number is on the cap next year. He's not going anywhere. Look at the team that they have built around him and Stafford. Now, you can't tell me that Tom Brady and, you know, whoever else he has around him that has a big uh, contract doesn't count against cap. Peyton Manning and Demarius Thomas, look at the team that they have. They're 12-4. and four. They have big money contracts on that team. Seattle, Richard Sherman, Earl Thomas, Russell Wilson. So I the 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 argument that his cap number is going to negatively affect in, in, the Lions is a bunch of horseshit. That's just plain brutal honesty. Guess what? The Miami Dolphins signed Ryan Tannehill, they have Ndamukong Sue, they have Cameron Wake, they have all these players on defense signed to $100 million plus contracts, and yet they still found a way how to do it. Now, I mean, granted, they're not a good football team, yeah. but they still signed a bunch of good players. Since we're talking Miami, do you want to transition to that next game? Yeah, let's transition to the, uh, to the Ndamukong Sue, let's break someone's ankle bowl. Yep, uh, Patriots look like they're in a lot of trouble, and it, and it's with this game and a couple others that I think there is no real favorite for the AFC. Whereas you can say it can easily go to the Car the Cardinals or the Panthers in the NFC, where they have clear favorites to not only win the NFC but also the Super Bowl. The AFC is so up in the air; even Houston and Pittsburgh are considered uh, viable threats. Yep. New England's, you know, normally people always had, oh, you can just replace someone, but they have replaced so many. A lot of teams have been hit by the injury bug. The the one who's been hit by it the worst, of course, is still Baltimore. 
But yeah. New England, their their offensive line has in, been in shambles, and uh, even a two week bye won't change things. It only prolongs the inevitable, you could say. But alas, they can only put up ten points against the the Dolphins, which came out to play not spoiler per se, but just to get at Tom Brady. They took a lot of hits. It was amazing they didn't even put him on the bench, so he, and try Garoppolo, but. The the Dolphins right. prevailed over the 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 Patriots twenty to ten. I really don't know what to say aside from talking about Sue, but they have a week off regardless. They've had that declared. All they needed was the Bengals to just beat the to beat the uh, the Broncos, and I and they would have clinched a first round bye, I think. Though maybe they would right. have had to win one of these two games. They just had to win one of these games. And they would have clinched the first round by or and home field advantage, but yep, I I'm not too sure what's going to happen, Bill. They they should get Amendola and Edelman. That will help a lot because you have talented wide receivers. But will it will it really, Bill? My question to you: Will it matter because their line is too much in shambles? All right. So the biggest issue with the Patriots going into the playoffs is obviously the offensive line. That is, that is paramount concern right now. And I feel like, I feel like that the game, this was a perfect time for them to have one of those games where the offensive line played like garbage, etc. This is the perfect timing. It might not have been the perfect timing because it got, you know, Tom Brady injured, but he's expected to play. The I hope so. The thing is, is that the offensive line will have Bill Belichick breathing down their throat, literally ready to take off some uh, steam on them and uh, make them practice in pads probably during the week. This is this is a perfect teaching moment because you're you're. You're basically saying, do you want to go back to the Super Bowl? Do you want to go to back to the Super Bowl? You're not good enough to go back to the Super Bowl. You just lost to a 4-11 team. You just lost to a 4-11 team. Do you think you can get to the Super Bowl? No, you're not going to the Super Bowl. Prove it to me why you are, you're eligible and you should go to the Super Bowl. That's what Bill Belichick is going to say. And obviously, that's on fire up Brady. That's on fire up the offense. And most importantly, he'll have the offensive line getting a lot of work in, and it's on fire up the offensive line because he'll he'll basically even throw it all on them. Like, you're the reason why we're not going to the Super Bowl this year. And obviously it'll motivate a lot of players. So it might have worked out in New England's favor that they played really bad before they went into the playoffs. Though it costs them complete home field advantage. Honestly, I think it depends who they play in their first round. Because if they play a team like Pittsburgh or Cincinnati, then I think it will it will it will not matter, or they'll be fine because those two defenses they can beat. The Bengals are the most balanced team, but their defense is not mediocre. It's good, but it's nothing they can't handle. And Pittsburgh's. Well, what 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 defense is there? It's just a right. bunch of bodies who can't even cover Gronk. But um, <laughs> on the uh, the other side, the other game, because if Pittsburgh were to win, honestly, I'm picking games specifically to shape how I want them to build, not because from not just from who I think will win on the AFC. Because let's say Pittsburgh won, then they'd have to play of the winner of the Chiefs Texans game, and those lines are still good. Granted. He, New England did make mincemeat out of Houston's defense when they played this year, and they're going to be at Gillette at least, but can you guarantee that that'll it'll happen again? Especially if you play the Chiefs. Last time those two played, you remember what happened. Everyone was like, oh, are the Patriots done? Is it over for Belichick and Brady? But, you know, that, that ended up not being the case. Right. So I honestly think their fate is going to be determined by... The, um, the the this first week of playoff games, if I were the a Patriot, right, a player right now, uh, especially a lineman, I would hope be- the Bengals win. You would, I would hope they would win, because by default they would 
be the one that goes to um, to Denver again. Or yep. Or no, 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 no. They would go to. No, never mind. I'm getting confused. I'm confusing myself. I'm overthinking it. But you get what I mean. Yeah, yeah. It really yeah. depends on who would go. Who would win here? Yeah. No. I mean, n okay. Let me try it again. The Bengals would go to New England, and the winner of the Chiefs Texans game goes to Denver, and they would have a defensive slugfest. I mixed it up at the last moment there. Yep. I want Houston to go de to Denver just to punish the Broncos. But I don't know. So, but now it's Peyton Manning. I wanted, I wanted Brock Osweiler to start there and then just get sacked by J.J. Watt ten times. But we'll talk about Houston next in a minute. But what were you gonna say, Bill? <laughs> I'll I'll put it this way. I think New England's defense is serviceable enough to hold and contain Ben Roethlisberger in that offense. They did it at the beginning of the year when. Really, Pittsburgh was pretty offensively pretty powerful. I mean, they didn't have Le'Veon Bell at that point, but they don't have Le'Veon Bell now. They don't even have Will and DeAndre Will Williams anymore, and he that was when he was, you know, carrying all the load. Yeah. but Literally, literally Pittsburgh is more dangerous now, and I still feel like they'll be able to key in on Pittsburgh because really – they don't have a running game to speak of. And if A.J. McCarron's playing against the Patriots, that's that's going to be a slaughter and waiting. I Pittsburgh I, cannot go to way. New England, by the way. In the in the divisional round, that's impossible because they're the lowest seed. They have to, if they win, they go to Denver by default. Right, right. Yeah. So no, I mean that would be a title game of, if that was possible. Which I don't yeah, think just so. Of, just of teams in in the playoffs and the Bengals, the Bengals, they they're in some they'll be in some hot water if they don't have Andy Dalton. I feel like like they're the most balanced of all the teams. I feel like they're a Super Bowl contender, but they need, you know they gotta get through Denver and uh, New England. Yeah, because the they say Andy Dalton would have might or might have come in the divisional round that's why they wanted the bye but even if he comes back he's still going to be rusty he had to shake it off against either uh the the one of the best defenses in football the Denver defense or Patriots and Andy Dalton does not have a good record in Gillette Stadium but um anyway so with 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 all that said I think if New England has a Jenga piece on defense, and that's Dante Hightower, whenever he's gone, their defense does not play as well, I've noticed. Right. They need... He is their leader. He's I think he's their signal caller, too, on defense. So he they need him back, which I think he will. They, I, I think he could have played this week, but they, cho they elected him not to, which is fine. But just say he needs to be healthy, and he needs to not get hurt again. Because if he gets hurt again, I think he very he himself will very much cost them the game. I would say even more than losing Gronk. Right. Some people say Gronk is the quintessential piece to that that team. I don't think so. I think it's him. Because I don't think they have a real you know a leader type uh, out uh, linebacker like they like other teams usually do. Like at least um, Houston has like Cushing for example. Uh, that's just one I could think of off the top of my head. Oh no! On the other side, you have like or Denver, you have like Von Miller, or Demarcus Ware. But right. anyway, I think we can we we can move on to Houston. Have you anything else to say on the Patriots, Bill? Are you worried about them or not? I mean, anything can happen in the in the playoffs. So I'm I'm not I'm not counting out any team to beating them. I just feel like New England's going to have a plan ready for whoever they play. And uh, I, I feel like they're going to be ready. If they play the Chiefs, I think they're done. Because I, if, I the offense is clicking just like the defense has been. Houston, they can be because guess what? They're playing Hoyer. And Hoyer's... Oh, and, I, and I would love for... If, they, if Houston were to go in there, I would love for Hoyer to throw three or four picks. Which, like, let's transition to that right now since we're talking Houston. I really want Hoyer to lose if they lose a playoff game, I want them to him to go out with with the biggest thud ever. 
I'm talking so many interceptions or just bad mistakes that he, either he's benched by the end of it, which I don't think you, I don't think you ever bench a quarterback in in a playoff game. You have to go with your best chance, right? Yep. So it's very just so that way it's the most fresh game in their mind rather than this. Like if the if they didn't make say Houston didn't make the playoffs because they got a winning record, O'Brien would definitely preach Hoyer uh, Hoyer to stay. Oh yeah. But. I really would like that. I would really like for that to happen. But anyway, so talk about this game now. Houston took care of business, to put things bluntly. They punished Jacksonville, only put, allowing them to six points. Have you noticed that, Bill? They've had they've limited a lot of teams to just six points. Yes. They limited the, the Titans to that much points the first time they played. They limited Jacksonville. I think no, not twice. They limited. I would have to check their win loss, uh, or their, their. Um, I'm gonna check right now, just cause I want. I want to know, cause they limited quite a few teams to six points. They limited the Buccaneers to nine points. They limited the Titans to six points. They limited the Bengals to six points. The Saints to six points. No, they did limit the Titans to six points twice. <laughs> So yeah, their when their de- defense is clicking, they do great. JJ Watt ha- didn't have the cast on, and he got he went off. Him and Whitney Merciless, because when Clowney falls, Merciless rises. Three and a half sacks apiece, a fumble, two uh, uh, Bortles turned the ball over twice via fumbles. One recovered by Watt, the other recovered by Merciless. And he threw two interceptions. One was a pick six by Kareem Jackson. Oh jeez. He should have had one, he should have had two pick sixes. It should have been thirty six to thirty, but or thirty seven to thirty. But you know they said it wasn't, even though I think it was. Right. Anyway, so yeah, Houston took care of business. I'll be honest, the offense did was serviceable. I. Yeah. They. They didn't really throw it to Hopkins as much as I would like, but everyone believes, it, or at least in Jacksonville, they believe in their corner, the one that was covering him. He did intercept and, the ball from Hoyer, I believe. And here's the other thing, is why show teams that you're going to play in the playoffs any tape on DeAndre the week before? You don't give them any tape to use. You don't give them anything to look at in... Then you throw at them a foreign concept that they haven't seen with DeAndre. And then it's just all over. You know, DeAndre is a special talent. And I feel like him not getting a lot of a lot of looks in the offense actually is beneficial going into the next game. Because then Kansas City has no tape from last game to... Okay, how did the, how did they line him up in this situation right now? Like in his current state. They have to look two or three weeks ago when he's not in his current state and he's playing with a different quarterback. You have the same quarterback and you know, DeAndre, that is the best thing because he's playing right now. And the, then they might roll some coverage towards whoever's the hot receiver right now. And DeAndre might get a little bit more single coverage because of it. And he's lethal. He's a lethal commodity. And I think Brian Hoyer's going to find a lot of him going into the playoffs. But that game against freaking Jacksonville, they proved something in that game. They put a lot of stuff on tape on the defensive side. Yeah. But um, I do want to highlight some more offensive troubles on injuries in particular. Now I okay. think Houston is limited to three wide receivers, Hopkins and the two rookies, okay. Keith Bumphrey and Jalen Strong. And Jalen Strong got more uh, more catches today, which I'm glad. The more he gets, the better he'll play. He's playing much better now, and I like it. But that's the problem, because now Nate Washington got a hip injury, he is not likely to play against the Chiefs. Cecil Shorts might come back, which I hope he does. They need him because they need, you know, they need depth. They need the ability to at least rest one of the 
other running or the other wide receivers and the other injury and I think this is crucial this might just if if Houston loses for any reason it's because now I believe they're going to uh, the Chiefs are going to stack a lot of of their defensive talent on the left side of Houston's line because Dwayne Brown tore his quad in the first quarter he's done he is done yeah. for the season it's really sad because he was he was a Pro Bowl alternate and he's to me the best left tackle in football. And I yeah. don't know I I don't I don't know how they people they usually recover from it, but I don't know how Houston can really adjust to it. They've adjusted to others. They've had many line changes, but I think what made them better at the end of the season, where they where, you know when they went on this this this, this turnaround. That was because their line is more stable. Back at the beginning, it was so unstable because I think Ben Jones was their center was hurt, and they had to like shuffle the other line players. The only consistent one was Dwayne, so it's unfortunate. Oh, yeah. But I think that's their going to be that's going to be their Achilles heel, at least when it comes to dealing with a front seven. And the Chiefs' front seven is nothing short of deadly. And the biggest issue that they have. And it, and you know it's going to happen. They're going to line him up over there. Justin Houston's going on that side to try to take advantage of this. Oh yes, he is. And I wouldn't be surprised if Houston ran the ball less to keep so their running back would, you know, help that side or another side, whoever, whatever it comes to. And and another another thing that Houston might try to start doing in this is using Justin Houston's aggressiveness in trying to rush the passer against him in throwing screen passes, lots of screen passes right at Justin Houston. Because he's on becoming up that left side, you throw a screen pass right behind him, and there you go. Now now you start getting him back on his heels, you start you start putting a lot you start putting them on their heels and then you start moving the football down and then he start he doesn't start rushing the quarterback as much from that side and then you start hitting the middle of the field and then you start running the football and there you go it, it's a formula you just got to be able to do it and i think i think Hoyer has the ability to do it this that's sort of his game the short passing game is his game now if he's going to take on teams that are really deficient at corner like Pittsburgh oh I, he's not having an issue yeah but I I don't know like I said I think Houston's gonna fuck up to either the Chiefs or the Tech or to the, the Patriots it, so I don't know where the Texans are gonna go but oh I want to tell you the story I want to tell the viewers the story I told you okay so Houston obviously is now the AFC champs or AFC South champs, and what happened was they had a little, like, not a concert type of thing, but, you know, there was some music being played outside the stadium to celebrate this. This is their third time they've won the division. And so they call, of course, they call players like Watt. They call, um, I think, Alfred Blue. And people were, you know, cheering for them. But then Hoyer comes up, and, and the guy who does the radio... Mark Vandermeer, he he's like calling out his name, and the crowd is not silent, but it's very weak. They're very weak in terms of applaud for Hoyer. I'm just glad the people at the Houston area know he's not the one for for us. And that's like what I said earlier. I really want Hoyer to go out with with a big thud. If he's gonna lose this game, I want him to go basically the same way when he first started against the Chiefs. Ironically. All those terrible decisions, those picks, just everything go wrong for him. It's no one's fault but his own. He did throw an interception, and he threw the ball way too hard at Hopkins and over him. I was like, what What, what are you, Ma Ryan Mallett right now? But <laughs> I still want Houston to draft a quarterback. They're going to be, they're obviously now in the, in the bottom 12 because they made the playoffs. But depending on where they lose, if they lose now, I if they lost in this round, they would definitely be the uh, the bottom of the twelve, right? Yep. Because they have the exactly. lowest record. So w yep. honestly, whichever works for me. But I would I will not be surprised if Houston beats the Chiefs at the same time because the Chiefs haven't, 
they haven't been dominating teams like they were before, like when say when they just punished Detroit for existing. It's like forty four to ten. But then they let the Raiders hang this week. They let uh who did they play last week? I forget who they played last week. They let some teams hang with them for a while. So now I wouldn't say they're vulnerable, but they're just not playing with that same intensity like they did before. But hey, you win ten games in a row, it's impressive. Oh yeah. But definitely. Anyway, so Bill, last little touch on the defense. I mentioned Watt and Merciless. Dear God, they the the Jaguars could not block them for the life of them. And when they did, they got holding calls against them. And Watt still reached him. (laughs) Oh oh, and you know what's funny? Watt did a dance after getting a fumble. He combined all the dances from like all the all the popular dances that were done this year, like um, Cam Newton's dab, the nay nay, and all that. And some he already knew after the game people were gonna call him out for that, and he had an answer. Um, how you how about you become a player? You go out and play, um, and you go and get a sack, and then you try to do a better dance. He's just calling out the <laughs> NFL media. It's like ironic. Like, yeah, the dance is funny. And, you know, so, cause one guy I listened to, he said that he's, oh, he practices this stuff in the mirror, which honestly is like, oh, okay, let's be fair. When you're this talented and this successful at your job, I don't, I, I mean, get, yeah, you could say that's a little, that's a little at his character right there, but honestly, when you're this talented and you're doing so wonders for your team, I think it's fine. You know? Just, and here's the other thing. And let the players have fun. Yeah, is this a no? F- in the end, in the end, this is this is a game. It's not like you're performing open heart surgery and doing that. You know, I mean, this is this is a football game. It's not it's not brain surgery. You know, let them have fun. It's 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 entertainment. In the, in the end, here's my sh- oh. obviously people are going to watch that. Here's my shot at the media. Okay, first, it's bad enough the refs are trying to put no fun allowed signs, but the last thing we need is you guys to do it. All work and no play makes me adult, an angry boy. Just saying. I mean, I mean, here's the thing. The media, the media wants Marshawn Lynch to talk. He gives comical answers, which I think is... A great thing. I'm glad the NFL, the, the NFL didn't find him for it. It's like, hey, he was there. He had to sit there. Nobody said he had to give legitimate and reasonable answers. But, you know. But here's the thing. He doesn't give legit answers because the media consistently portrays whatever he says in some sort of spun, biased way. Yeah, it's like you would think he's no he's like a New York... Like, they're reporting to the New York columnist or whatever they call it. Because God knows how bad that is. Marshawn, uh, I'm, I'm just going to put it this way. I, I applaud Marshawn Lynch. I, uh, Marshawn Lynch, good on you, man. Thank you. I, I enjoy it because actually it's really comical and it's really funny and I hope you do more of it. Because it's fun. It's just good TV. It's fun when you stick it to the... Uh... You stick it to the um, the uh, what do you call the status quo? No, you stick it to the to the media because you know, Just Bill. You know, I have the like things against the media. We all do, I'm, or we all should. I mean, we all do, you know. But all right, all right, Bill. We're done with with talking that with, with about Houston. So now, let's let's mention the. The other stuff that happened. First, let's talk about the games before we talk about the coaches getting fired. All right, I think that's I think that's right. reasonable. So the um, I'll be honest, Bill. I, I when I saw the Titans playing hanging with the Colts, I thought you were going to be right, <laughs> but it didn't happen. The I, little did you fail to realize Zach Mettenberger cannot win games for the life of him. It almost happened. It almost happened, but you know what? The Colts just played a little more or harder for their coach. And, and I think that's what decided it. And by a little harder, I mean by the skin of their teeth harder. Yeah, but it was just <laughs> I mean, enough. 
honestly, if it was in Tennessee, I would have picked Tennessee. But it was at Indy. I just took the home field advantage. But you you just got to witness that Indianapolis without Andrew Luck is a two and fourteen football team. They weren't two and fourteen yeah. though, because Matt Hasselback did yeah. win them games. But you know, you can only beat bad teams for so long before they start figuring you out. And your age's I mean, gotta catch up to you. And here's the other thing is Indianapolis wasn't built to be a good team in the first place. They're, they weren't a good team. They're the glass cannon. Andrew Andrew Luck hid a lot of problems that that team had. Last year, when that, that 51-48 game happened, you know, it sort, of, it sort of threw up the red flags. Like, yo, what's up with that indie defense? It's not good. It hasn't been good for a long time and will continue to not be good. When was that 51-48 game again? Who was it against? It was... I don't even remember. Was it a playoff game? It was during the regular season. Last oh, because I, I was thinking, are you sure you're not thinking of the Chiefs game where they won 45-44 and a, a really good comeback? That might be it. That was a, that I'll be honest, that was a good game. I like that game a that lot. Was a, that was a good playoff game, but I mean, oh, that was a playoff game, yes. That's the Andrew Luck dive over the goal line game, yep. Yeah. But he, he masks a lot of problems and that a team I think has. it's just because they're GM, and also it's, I think it's not, I think, it, I think and actually, no, it's I would take that back. I, yeah, I don't think it's the GM, it's, it's just a philosophy set by, guess who, Peyton Manning. Remember, they won a Super Bowl without a defense. I still don't know how they did it, but they did it. Well, and that I'll worked back then. They, did it. They, what? They, they played the Chicago Bears that had Rex Grossman at quarterback. Ah. <laughs> Well, well, that explains a lot. That's, so that's how they did it. Okay, so, so then yes, it was. <laughs> it it just it, I think with that it laid a philosophy that we don't need it. That would have that might have worked a little more in in ten years ago, but it won't work now. It will not work now. Teams are all starting to lean on on to draft you know good corners to block because it's a pass heavy game and they're getting prepared for that. And if you don't have a defense to match up with that, you're done. The, the Seattle Seahawks are a perfect role model of what a NFL team is. I think the they kind front, of foresaw it. The front seven are good to borderline great. But the 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 safeties in the secondary, they they are legit nasty. Well, they call it the Legion of Boom. But, They're the Legion of Boom for a reason. Yeah, but I think they they were one of the few teams that foresaw it. Yep. Houston was just good by chance because they had Wade Phillips, and I still miss him. I wish he stayed with us, but he's with Denver, and that's why they're the number one defense because he's one of the better coordinators. I'm amazed he didn't get called back for a for a whole year, but I think it was because of that horrendous two fourteen two and fourteen season. You know, like I don't care I what mean, what your what team you're on. If it's two fourteen, it's it's kind of hard to wipe that away. I'm just gonna put it out there. Wade Phillips is a good head coach too. Look at the Dallas Cowboy teams under him. They went thirteen and three, twelve and four, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and won freaking divisions with him and had a good defense with Tony Romo. Yeah. But that was when no, everyone I'm said kidding. Tony Romo was bad. It was all his fault. He didn't have a line. Never had really everything he needed. And even then, sometimes it was the fault of the defense. And you had to make him be, you know, be Tom Brady. Which I don't think he is Tom Brady. Or anywhere close to him. I mean, comparing Jason Garrett to Wade Phillips. Wade Phillips is the way better coach. Uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not sure on there. But honestly, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what to say about Dallas right now. I mean, well, I already told you their problems, but just oh, how yeah. bad they did against Washington. But it didn't matter. I thought Washington wasn't even going to use their starters, but they just did it anyway to just stick it to Dallas. I guess it was over that loss they had. If Washington beat that, beat them over there, I think they would have played less because they would have had the division clinch sooner. They would have had a clinch. Want... What? No, 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 go ahead. They would have clinched it even before they played the Eagles, I think. They would have clinched it the moment they beat Chicago. <laughs> 
just because of how what? bad You're... the the whole division is. What? Now, now kind of piggybacking off in off that, we're going to. What do you think about talking some Cleveland? Bill, I would, but the, I wanted I want to get another shot at Green Bay, Bill. Then we'll talk okay. to coaches. Okay. For a, I saw that Sunday night football game. It was ugly. I don't. Even, I don't. I was just doing something else while I was playing in the background, because it was just right. three three for the whole for half of the game. But then Minnesota took control. Adrian Peterson, though he's hurt, and that might. I think that will cost them the game if he's not. Even if he's playing, he won't be at 100. percent He's got like a lower back issue. Yeah. But they beat Green Bay. I should have picked Minnesota because it would have been in. Tr- uh, a truly good season where they they're like oh we're invincible in Lambo. Okay, let's make this clear. The the you can favor the Packers and the the Seahawks at home, but they are not invincible anymore. They are not invincible at home anymore. But right. Minnesota, Chicago, and Detroit beat Green Bay at Lambo. <laughs> I love it. Green Bay went a perf a uh, uh, perfectly split three and three in the division, and all their losses are at home. And here's the mystical thing. Remember the first game that they lost at Lambeau, and they were they were saying, "Oh, the Green Bay Packers are unbe uh, they're un- almost unbeatable at home at Lambeau against their division opponents." And then Chicago goes in there and just beats them. It beats them and on then, Brett Favre night, no less. With also Bart Starr there, too. How do they exactly. not play with just, you know, 50 to nothing at half? They couldn't do that anymore. They can't do it anymore. Not without Jordy Nelson. And Detroit comes in there and then beats them. And they haven't done that in 20-plus years. And then it's it's for the division crown. This is for the division crown. And they didn't even come to play in that game. So the Green Bay Packers, that offense, that the defense too. A, They're both in shambles, and it's not. I don't think it's because of injuries on defense. At least it I, just sucks. I'll, I'll put it this way: we all knew that the Green Bay defense was bad. Yeah, but I no it, one would acknowledge it. I knew it. And everyone else that follows football should know that. Clay Matthews is their only good player on defense. The rest of that defense is overrated and masked by Aaron Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, it's like what you said with the Colts. Luck masks their problems. So does Aaron Rodgers because everyone's so fast and like, oh, Aaron Rodgers, the greatest quarterback of all time. Aaron Rodgers is having a horrendous year. And I personally... Personally, and this is coming from a, a you know a Detroit Lions fan, you know, and I'm not big I'm not a big Packers guy, but I would say that Aaron Rodgers is either hurt and not saying anything to Mike McCarthy, or to the or media, something, or something's wrong with Aaron Rodgers because. He he's having one of the worst years I've ever seen him play, and obviously that it's no skin off my back because I'm not a Packers guy, I'm a Lions guy, and it kind of makes me glad that Minnesota Vikings won the division. I think we've talked about it before, and, but I think the pivotal re- reason why they started losing was when Denver's number one defense exposed them, because everyone's yeah. done the same things they did. And I've talked many times, so I won't talk about it today. But they've done, they did what they did to keep Maker and Rodgers uncomfortable, and that's what's cost them all those games and the division crown. Yep. I'm just tired yep. of Green Bay winning them all the time. I mean, just think of it this way: had had Detroit won that game against Green Bay, Green Bay doesn't even make the playoffs. Would would they? I don't think they would. But Atlanta didn't even, wasn't even close either. They if cuz they lost to New Orleans, had they won against New Orleans, maybe, but they didn't this week and I think that's what would have costed De- them. Detroit Detroit lost two games, and then it would have been Green Bay and that CL game and they win and they go 9 and 7 and Green Bay goes 8 and 8. 
Lions are in the playoffs. Oh, yeah, true. And they would have had the edge over the Seahawks, but... Yep. Oh, boy. All right, Bill, now we can talk coaches. Okay, where do, where, where do you want to start? We've Did we ever talk about Chip Kelly? I think we did. We did. Okay, so he, so he's gone. We already know Miami's coach is gone. Tennessee's coaches are gone. We know. Um, okay, um, we'll, we'll get a good one. Even though I don't like this team, I'm pretty sure Billy, you have some signs of respect because I want to save the best one for last. Um, uh, Coughlin today announced he's he's done with the Giants. He hasn't eliminated the possibility of coaching again, but just not with the Giants. And Bill, what do you think of that? I I totally respect his decision to walk away from that organization, and I I sort of think like Tom Coughlin saw the writing on the wall, like they didn't know if they were gonna keep him or not, and before and before they made the decision to fire him, why not walk out with dignity, uh, dignity, and you know say you know and get to walk out on his own terms. He didn't. So wait, he, he actually got fired. fired? I, I'm thinking that he probably heard inklings that he was going to get fired by the New York Giants. And I feel like he he was like, Okay, so they're going to fire me. I'm going to I'm going to resign before they can announce it. So that way I get to leave on my own terms. You know? So that way so that way he can he's he's a seven year old dude and you know I mean he he deserves that that way he doesn't go out. You know, he doesn't deserve to, you know, he's 70 years old. How many more teams is he really going to realistically coach for a realistically long time? Not many. So, he deserves to he deserves to go out the way he wants to go out. I don't know if he's going to coach again. I feel like he wants to live to see him get himself getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. To yeah. Be honest. Well, then he would have to retire now. He would have to retire now. And I mean, it, it'll be a sad day for football that Tom Coughlin's gone, but look at the the accomplishments. He took a he took a I think his first coaching job was the uh, the head coaching job was the uh Jacksonville Jaguars huh. and he took them to he took them to the uh, AFC title game in the in late 90s. That was an expansion team that he took to the freaking AFC title game. That team was really good, really fast, and that's because of Tom Coughlin. Wow, never knew that. And now they yeah, are not even was... a shell of their former selves. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the Jaguars were a really good team in the late 90s and early 2000s. I think in those uh, days, they, they always they, played Pittsburgh twice, when it was like the AFC Central. Yep, the AFC Central days where they got Pittsburgh, they got Indy, <laughs> they got they got a lot of really difficult teams to play. Yeah. And, uh, you, you had a young Peyton Manning during that time, you know, I mean, he was he was just in his heyday, I mean putting up 4,500-yard passing seasons constantly. I mean, but I have a lot of respect for Tom Coughlin, and it's, I'm glad he got to walk out on his own turf. Yeah. But anyway, Bill, let's move to another one. Who else is fired? I don't even know if, um, did, um, did Chuck Pagano get uh, kicked out? Uh, he, he did not get fired yet. So far that I know. And Sean Payton will know his fate tomorrow. I think he's there's no there's no. Um... Uh, the Saints are crazy. They are. <laughs> the, the Saints are crazy if they get rid of Sean Payton. That's just flat out they're crazy. Also, one one coaching rumor that is flat out stupid and crazy is Jim Harbaugh going to the NFL. He's not going to the NFL. Get through your heads. Guess what? The University of Michigan has a lot of cash. They're not going to let him go. They are not. They want him there. It was. It was. It was their. It was the the 49ers loss because they fired 
uh, Jim Tom Sula after just one season, when you put him in a bad situation where everyone is supposed to go, every one of their good players either left to another team or retired because Harbaugh left, and it's like I okay, Bill. Honestly, I really want to give the Cleveland Browns ownership the worst thing, but for right now, this year or this season, I have to give it to the 49ers. So I brought a good point on on um on an NFL podcast I listened to. You put him in this such a bad situation, and you expected him to t- carry this team to the playoffs. That I, that's just I, that's horrible. That's a stupid idea. So, and I'm I'm not done putting it on ownership. I know who I'm going to put this on. Who do you got? And it's the 49ers GM Trent Balky. I, Trent Balky. I'm putting it on both. Is, He's an egomaniac. He's an egomaniac, and he thinks he's he thinks he's God's gift to GMs. Well, get it through your thick skull. Your team was not good. Jim Tom Sula deserved better than that. He was a good man. He deserved a better shot than what you gave him. You gave him a substandard team that was filled with players that love Jim Harbaugh. And sure, Jim is going to rub you the wrong way. But you know what? He he got the most out of his players week in and week out, and he had their back every week. And sure, he, he made you fight for your playing time, but in the end, that makes sure you come out and you're forced to play your best every week. Jim Tom Sula did not deserve what Trent Baalke gave him. He should have gave him another shot, and... You know, it's more his fault for forcing Harbaugh out and forcing poor Tom Sula. Poor Tom Sula, he 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 got royally screwed by Balky. I can I can only see him maybe going to Miami, the other side, the other coast, but I I don't know. I don't even know. But anyway, Bill, let's talk about the worst one. The the the. <laughs> the last one I believe I think I retweeted a list of each one that got okay so yes we mentioned the Dolphins the Titans Eagles 49ers Giants yes and the Browns yep and oh boy I okay if you thought that was bad the Browns have like a a, a weird standard of who to pick like they're gonna get a coach and that and he has like they have they have a limited pool to choose from, and then they gotta choose a GM with that coach, which also has a limited thing. And apparently Manziel is they have given up on him. And it's 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 honestly I that's I know you want to give the Browns one too, and I will. Brown I mean Petten is still the worst coach of the year for me. He still gets that. But you know what? Yeah. I, this has gone far. This has gone far beyond. So right now, I want to give it to the 49ers. But you know what? By the end, when we give, when we talk about other stuff later on, maybe I'll have, I'll have switched over to the Browns because rightfully so. Oh my God! Honestly, you're talking about oh, let's move teams to L.A. And I'm like, you know what? How about forget about that for now? I want to get rid of the Cleveland Browns. Put that. Make another North team. I don't even know where. But you know what? Cleveland seems cursed for for football. I get rid of that owner too. Don't let him go with it. Just a new or a new team, everything new, including the owner, because the owner is an idiot, and everyone in the Cleveland Browns organization is just full of it. Because I mean, oh, go ahead, Bill. I'll let you I'll let you the, start. The Cleveland Browns, man. The Cleveland Browns. That. Those poor fans of the Cleveland Browns, so, they are so screwed because their owner is a meddlesome moron that doesn't know what he's doing. I mean, literally, I'm I'm just not sugarcoating it. He's a moron. He needs to disinvest himself from making any decisions. For his football team. He's worse than Jerry Jones. He needs to just step back, put three layers of football people between him and making a decision before he even makes a decision. Because I, I, you literally, you literally cannot tell what's going to go on with Jimmy Haslam. 
Here's here's a really crazy statistic from the from the last five years of uh, Jimmy Haslam owning the team. They've had four head coaches in five years. That's sad. That is really really sad. And honestly, here's the other thing. The thing I wanted to say. I may call the Titans the least talented team, and they still are, in my opinion. But I think people, if if, if free agents had, okay, guys, you can only choose between the Titans and the Browns. Which one will you go to? I can say about 70 to 80 percent of those players would rather go to Tennessee if there was no like limit on people who can go, of course. So right. I think it would be. I, I think people would rather go there because guess what? They got Mariota, and he did show flashes of being a viable, you know, threat to the other teams in the division. And, and here's but, the other thing. What? And here's the other thing is this instability. Some of their best players are already saying, "Oh, I'm going to free agency." Exactly. They're leaving because they're fed up with this. That's why I would like if the NFL, which they're not going to consider, they are not. They I, because they rather think of oh let's move all three of these teams to L A or two out of three or maybe just one. They're debating on what whether a team should move to L A or not. But I'm like you know those franchises sure they're having some lows right now, but they haven't had it as consistently bad as the Browns. It's like usually when you move a team, it's because they're doing so bad, and the team and the the fan base will just disconnect with it, right? They're they're, they're well. They're also in a fine. Most of the reason why St. Louis is going to leave St. Louis and why San Diego's going to leave San Diego and why Oakland's going to leave Oakland is due to stadium deals. Yes. And that's the bottom line. That's that's it. They can't they can't get the taxpayers to fund the stadium. So that way, it's on their backs, not on the owners' backs. The rich billionaires. They don't want to pay for a stadium. God no. Oh no, yeah, that it, annoys it me. It should go. It should go in the taxpayers of the city that they mooch off of, and then put a shitty fucking team onto, and then they they build a stadium off of those taxpayers' backs. So that way they can charge ticket prices of a hundred to two hundred off of those same taxpayers. So that way they can line their pockets. It's saddening, but that's another subject for another day, Bill. But I, okay, I, I okay. Apparently, Manziel wants to go to Dallas. Well, we already knew he wanted to be a cowboy for a while. I mean, when you're from Texas, you kind of want to go to a, a Texas team. Or let's be fair, when you're in any state, and if you, chances are you would like to play for that team of that state because you likely grew up enjoying them. Right. So you, you like like. As a Detroit as a Detroit kid, I dreamed of, you know, being like a player for the Lions or the Red Wings or the Tigers, you know, etc. For me I dreamed of being a Texas Ranger in baseball, but if I played football I don't even I couldn't I don't even know. Apparently I was told that I have long I have I have a good arm length or arm width, whatever you call that. So they said, Oh, you could be a lineman or something. I don't want to be a lineman. But I don't know. That sound that's not could, fun for me. I would rather be like a defensive tackle or end grab someone, but that's the side the that's a, that's we're going off subject. I really want <laughs> if Manzel really goes, I want him to go to Dallas or Houston somewhere and succeed there. Whenever his time whenever his num whenever his numbers call cuz I'm not saying he's going to play right away cuz if he goes to Dallas, he is not playing right away unless Romo gets hurt. I want him to succeed. And then that will piss off the Cleveland fans, not at Manziel, because they have faith in him, but at the owner and the organization. I really want that to happen, just for not just irony's sake, but also so the fans will turn on this owner. And I don't know what the NFL has power to change the owner, but I just want them. To, I just want the NFL to notice that nobody likes the Browns anymore, not even their own fans. So why be there? You know what I mean. I, I feel like the Browns fans love the Browns and they're gonna show up no matter what and Because they're know. masochists. Nothing but masochists. I mean at least you got a football team and that's what it it's up to the Browns fans to 
Yeah, I mean, I'm no sociology major, so I don't know Cleveland culture, but hey, you've got at least basketball with LeBron James. I don't like LeBron James, but you have a talented player there, and more people go there because he's there. But here's the issue with Cleveland and why they, they'll go and support their teams, because they haven't won in a very long time. The The last championship for Cleveland was the Cleveland Indians, and I think that was 1945. That was baseball, right? Yep. yep. Oh, God, that's so crazy. <laughs> oh, but... They haven't won a title in over 60 to 70 years in any of the major sports mm -hmm. that they're in. So, Bill... So, oh. they're going to support it no matter what. All right, Bill, so do you have anything else to say about Cleveland? Because I... Uh, I, you already know how I'm feeling. Shame on this organization. Shame on the owner. And they just keep... Yep. They love putting themselves in bad uh, situations. At least with Dallas, yeah, when yeah. Jerry Jones was getting out of control. They said, no, you're not going to make the decisions. We're going to pick in this draft. And I can't say whether the draft picks for this year were successful because they didn't really play them that much. Like, at least when Houston and other teams at the beginning got their players, they started them right away. Even the late yeah, round people, like... The Pittsburgh Steelers, they started Bud, they they started, uh, they started their, but I think Bud Dupree is his name? It really, it really all depends how you feel about your football team. Yeah. If you feel like you're already, you're already good and set at the starting positions, you're not going to start a rookie. Yeah, or if it's like, okay, we really need talent on here, so let's put him in right now, because we don't have anyone else. But, and, and, I mean, Dallas and, is in that situation. Season, like, Dallas's corners are the worst as as a whole as a unit. They're the worst. So I don't like. Why don't you start this guy, get him some reps, and get him better? Because they need to draft another one this year. Seriously. But I mean, we'll talk draft needs when we get to that point way later in the year. Yep. But anyway, oh, yeah. Bill. So nothing else to say on the the Browns. Nope. Nope. I think I'm good. All right, Bill. Let's talk playoff picks. Oh, man. I did really There's horrible. Only... But I don't matter. I know I've lost to you, Bill, but it's fine. I don't care anymore. It's all right. Oh, man. So there's only four games and two on Saturday and two on Sunday. So the Saturday game, four o'clock game, it's the Kansas City Chiefs at the Houston Texans. I'm getting what I want right right away. I'm going Houston because I'm a homer, but if they are to lose, I want Hoyer to go out in the most ugly fashion, so Houston has no other choice but to draft another quarterback. Even if he don't play right away, at least you'll have that guy in the back waiting for his number to be called. Oh, jeez. All right, here we go. This is, this is the crazy thing. I'm predicting an overtime thriller between these two. It goes on until someone wins. Playoff rules are different than regular season. Overtime thriller between these two is going to be the Kansas City Chiefs winning by a field goal. Uh, but it's going to be a long overtime game. Are you talking two overtimes? Yes. Oh, boy. All right, Bill. Next this, game. That's uh, that's the sort of feeling I'm getting from that game. All right. All right. The the eight o'clock game. The Pittsburgh Steelers at the Cincinnati Bengals. No run game means the Bengals can concentrate on getting to Big Ben, and I think that's what's gonna happen. Um, this one is gonna be a good uh, a good back and forth type of game, but I trust the Bengals defense more than the Steelers offense because they've they've known to choke and I think if they're if the Steelers will lose I think it's going to be due to a really bad decision by Mike Tomlin I have the Bengals winning I, I also have the Bengals winning AJ McCarron is going to have a great game against the Steelers defense and he's going to throw zero interceptions all right oh I know we were done with the Browns but I want to make a point another point before we move on the Bengals, okay. um, they're, they're, Bengals and the Browns are in the same state, right? Yep. yep. They're like, they're they're a tale of two teams, basically. Unlike the Cleveland, who's hit the reset button so many times, the Bengals have kept 
consistency with in their coaching department and with their players. And what you saw was a lot of frustration, like say with Dallas when they were having troubles, but they kept they kept the core pieces still there, and now everything's clicking. And that's right. why I think they're the. That's what that's what Cleveland lacks. Their owner is not patient. They don't have a patient owner like say Houston does with Bob McNair, or with Bengals case the Bengals case with a patient GM and a patient owner, and that's what's right. killing the Browns. So that was the last point I wanted to make. Let's go to the Sunday games, Bill. Oh man, Sunday games. This is going to be interesting. Okay, the one o'clock game, the Seattle Seahawks at the Minnesota Vikings. Oh boy, I have Seattle. I don't think Adrian Peterson's going to matter. It won't be a a, a shoot. It won't be a punishment type of game like last time when Seattle nearly shut them out because the Vikings' defense is all here. They're all ready to play. They were all gone last time, but this time I think Seattle's going to win it just by a touchdown. Richard Sherman's going to get a game-clinching interception. And I feel I feel about the same way. I feel like the Seahawks have just enough to beat the Vikings, and they are going to win. I think they're more talented overall. And plus, Marshawn Lynch will come back. I don't expect him to play great, but he'll do just enough. All right, and here we go, the 4 o'clock game, the Green Bay Packers at the Washington football team. Oh, boy, I really wanted the, I really want Washington to lose, but I'm not picking them. I am actually picking them to beat the Packers because in true Pack fashion this year, they are going to blow it. It'll bring a smile to my face. It's either pick a team I hate them a lot or pick a racist team. I guess I'll pick the racist team. Does it make my character look bad, Bill? No, no it doesn't because I'm picking Washington as well and I'm picking them to blow out the Packers. Oh, they I'd love to see to, that. They are going to blow out the Packers and I've got Kirk Cousins throwing for 400 yards and four touchdown passes on this defense. I want to oh, continue. Aaron Rodgers will not have a touchdown pass in this game. Okay, I want I want Deshaun Jackson to get a touchdown and just taunt them while he's doing. You know how he taunts uh, people when he gets a touchdown. I want him to do that in front of Sam Shields. It will be beautiful. The, the, the cheese will start on fire. Yep. But anyway, I I think that'll do it for the wild card edition of Football Talks. We will see you guys next week in the divisional round. Do you have anything else to add, Bill? Not too much. All right, we will see you next week.